normally when people have got this idea and you're kind of starting to look around the problem and the value stream and how all these bits fit together, one of two things happen. Either people think about financials too much or they don't think about them at all. So this next section that we're going to run through is a really high level middle ground to say, think about financials, don't get stuck on them. So we're not trying to create massive spreadsheets and financial forecasting, everything is guessing. There's so many assumptions baked in, there's so many things that anything you write on a piece of paper is going to be absolutely worth, worthless. But at the same time, you need to understand the mechanics of what's actually going on. You need to think about it. So when we say, like, post-it financials, we really mean post-it financials. Like, take post-it notes and put three of them down. Do one on money in, one on money out, and then one on the balance. Is kind of the idea around it. And, 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 and it doesn't need to be overly complex. This is just something that David and I worked out, which has an error, which if somebody notices it. Can and, and it also cannot us. be right at this stage, because you don't have real numbers. And, and, and it doesn't matter. You just need to understand, you need to understand two things. One, how are you going to sell it? How much are you going to sell it for? How many people do you need to reach, like more or less, um, round it up to the nearest thousand or 10,000 um, to make this feasible? To say, if I'm selling something for 50 rand, that's probably a half decent marketable price, I'm going to have to sell it to 20,000 people before I can cover two months of salary because this is the salary I want to make. And these are kind of as complicated as you can get. If this seems too complicated, just do one column. This is three months, six months, and 12 months. But if it's too complicated, just go, I'm going to spend so much on my product and stuff, and this is my sign-ups. And this is one example. Ignore what's in that example. <laughs> So one thing is what I told about in terms of determining what price people would be willing to pay for your product. It's one thing when you're asking them how much you'd be willing to pay, but I know it's another thing once you're asking them to pay that money. So yeah. how do you determine the price you should charge? But right now it doesn't matter. Okay. Pick a price. And, and, and pricing is a bit of a dark art, and we'll get into that a little bit further, further down the line and how you do pricing. And in the short, one of the easiest ways to do it is pick a high price and discount down. So say 50% discount for the first three months and see if people buy it, and if they do, they right, If they're willing the to give you any money for it, it's validation. Yeah, and so you just decrease the discount until they stop buying it, and you realize, well, that's probably what our price should be. So there's a whole bunch of tricks and tips on how to do that, but right now, it doesn't matter. Like, you're completely assuming that you could build for that price. You're completely assuming that this person is your customer. You're like, everything is a passive assumption. Just pick a price that seems half reasonable and see what the numbers look like. Jump along. So then what is the point of having this? Because you have to think about it at some point. You have to have an idea that financials are just the next version of your business model. From uh, iteration design through to value proposition canvas, through to uh, basic financials, through to business model canvas, those are all just personifications of your business model. They're different ways of representing the same business model. And at this point, you have to have thought at some way around what is this going to cost? Is this remotely going to be feasible? And where am I looking? What type of funding am I looking? And these so are the kind of questions that you're going to need to ask. Yeah, and this is, this is the way that you're going to get, you can move on to it. So on the revenue side, it's things like how many people use it? How many of those users will actually be customers? Or how, what is the conversion going to be? Is everyone going to pay? Um, how are they going to pay? Who are they going to be um, on the cost side? It's what do you need to run this business? Like, would you need to make something? Do you need to hire people? Do you need to do that? What would it look like if you hire two or three people? And you can do that for, like, say, in the next three months, we're not going to hire anyone. Then we're going to need to stop paying some kind of salary because you're going to run out of money. So I'll pay myself X. And just put the numbers down so you can stop, stop taking. Sorry. What does conversion mean? Conversion means so how many people land on the site? compared to convert to becoming a customer. So how do you actually cross some kind of threshold? So it might be people who land on the site and then download the, the link. Or, or in a normal sales or. business, like how many leads do you need to speak to to convert to paying customers? Yeah, so if you're selling Snoodies, which is a scarf hoodie mix, um, how many customers do you need to talk to, corporate customers do you need to talk to to find one who wants to buy a thousand? Like those are your leads and how many of those will convert into customers. And this is a complete guess, but you're just taking a guess. You're putting something down that you can go and see if you were right or wrong yeah. later. And, and, and the important thing around um, is to ultimately work out your burn. So you're not, in the early stages, you're not going to be making more money than you're going to spend. Um, you're, it's, the unit economics aren't going to necessarily um, work out, but it's a really good idea to understand what costs are going into this, this business. We call burn because 
And if you're doing it rapidly, you literally are just burning through cash. And, and the important thing is, is that what, the reason you use burn is you work out how much longer you have left. How much runway have I got until I run out of money or until this needs to take off? And so that's really, and the burn is really just your revenue minus your costs. And you can see how many loops, like how far is the, how much money are we going to have to spend before the revenue starts catching up and it becomes an upward, upward tick. And you can work out those numbers on how we're going to actually run, run the business. So there's the same example and a little more, a little more thing, a little more detail. So your burn rate is basically from the different months, what the revenue will be in each of those months, what your costs will be monthly, what the balance is, and then times three months, six months, or times three months, three months, six months. Um, and so for us to get this business, to get this business figure out, we need to raise 1.3 million rand. As a hypothetical example, this is more or less where we need to go. And that immediately gives you a whole bunch of assumptions that you can then go and test and say, will customers pay this much for it? Uh, are my costs really this? Uh, am I converting at 10% where I thought I would get 20%? So you've got, you start getting some kind of benchmark that you can measure how you're going against. 